Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the United States Army. Our story is entitled, Underwater Soldiers. This is the story of the deep sea technicians of the 7th Transportation Regiment at Fort Eustis, Virginia, and military divers on 24-hour call at Army port installations from Yokohama to Europe. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment. But first, those who enjoy freedom must help support it. And in these uncertain times, we must remain strong and alert to the dangers that surround us. If you're qualified, you can join Freedom's team by becoming a member of your United States Army. There's an urgent need for technical specialists in every field. You'll receive the world's finest training and at the same time build an interesting and rewarding career. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for full information. And now your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Underwater Soldiers. boy and a girl swimming at Old Point Comfort Beach, Virginia. The girl, Jane Gunther. The boy, Carl Jordan, taking a final shore weekend before carrying through on an important decision. Give your hand back up on the raft, Jane. Oh, thanks, I'm up. <laughs> hey, did you see those big blues that sheared off when we went down that time? Blue fish in this close? Yeah, hey, school of them. We'd have had spears, we could have oh, shot Carl, them. with those rubber flippers on your feet, you moved so fast down under, I couldn't keep <laughs> up with you. Oh, sorry, I forgot. But the goggles worked out for you that time, didn't they? Oh, perfectly. Everything was as clear as up here. Yeah, sometimes things can be clearer underwater than they ever get up here. What do you mean, Carl? Well, I, I head back home to Richmond tomorrow. In a week, I'll be in the Army. Isn't that what you want to do? Enlist, I mean? Well, sure, but... Oh, you don't sound at all as if Well, you... the trouble is, Janie, I, I told my father I'd make it Army, and I guess that's what it'll have to stick to. He was Army, and... I guess he'd almost disown me if I went for anything else. So would I. So would you. Carl, I just realized it was just this morning we met for the first time. You've never seen me in anything but this bathing suit. <laughs> you think I'm complaining? You're about the best looking... The best looking corporal on the beach. Corporal? I'm a wax, Carl, from Fort Monroe here. I've been in the Army for nearly a year, and I love it. Oh, uh, well, wait a minute, Jane. Uh, let me get straight on this. Now, I didn't say oh, that... whatever I... you said, for a man going into the Army, you don't sound hilarious about it. Well, it's, it's probably foolish, but... See, ever since I was a kid, I've been crazy about the water. Ponds, rivers, ocean here, any kind of water. Getting under it, mostly, with goggles the way we're doing now, and fishing or collecting stuff, or just looking around at all there is to see down below. You think no one in the Army ever gets a chance to swim? Well, I'll admit you're stationed near a beach, but it might just be my luck to get assigned a thousand miles away from salt water. Carl, you're from Virginia here. Haven't you ever been over to Fort Eustis? Well, yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Why all the questions? My brother's a master sergeant over at Fort Eustis. I happen to be meeting him in Newport News tonight for dinner. Oh, would you like to drive over with me? Well, sure, but how do I rate? I think you might like to hear about Bill's job over at Fort Eustis. He's a diver, Carl, and he does his deep-sea work for the United States Army. Yes, there's a diving section in the Army, in the 7th Transportation Regiment. Both an operating diving section and underwater school are maintained at Fort Eustis, Virginia. And teams of deep-sea military divers are on duty around the world with port maintenance battalions of the Transportation Corps and with amphibious engineer units. 
That night, when he met Jane's brother, Master Sergeant Bill Gunther, Carl Jordan knew he'd found what he wanted to do in the Army. You say anyone can put in for training in military diving, Sergeant? If he qualifies, Jordan. You gotta pass Army Regulation 4100 for one thing, and that's one of the stiffest physicals in the Army. Well, he's nearly as tough as you are, Bill. I've seen him swim. Well, now, say I'm lucky enough to get by the physical. You say you've worked in a shipyard and done some welding? Well, probably not up to your standard, but I've handled the tools. Well, that'll help. When a diver gets under, he's got to be ready to be about everything but a paper hanger. <laughs> Bill, you're breaking his heart. Janie, if he's willing and able to learn, and if he can apply what he learns 100 feet down, a couple of tons of water shoving down on you, maybe in mud, nine times out of ten without being able to see. Bill, are you deliberately trying to scare Carl out of trying for the diving school? Mike Moran says if you can scare a man off by talk, Janie, he's not cut out for a diver. What about it, Jordan? Sound like too tough a deal for you? You'll have to tell me that, Sergeant, after I get to Fort Eustis. Or at least if they let me get there after I finish basic. Carl Jordan qualified after his enlistment in the Army and eventually made it to the diving school at Fort Eustis. Welcomed there by Colonel Deagle, commanding officer of the school, Operations Chief Eugene F. Mike Moran, Sergeant Bill Gunther and other underwater veterans, Carl and the men of his training class began learning the essentials of one of the most challenging jobs in or out of the service. The Army gives rated divers extra hazard pay because any job you go on can be dangerous. Dangerous and pretty important. Whether you clear mines and underwater obstructions under fire, as Army divers did going into Inchon Harbor, or go down for kegs of government silver dollars like they once did back in Manila Bay. But if you new men learn enough from your instructors here, and if you keep cool and collected when you're under, you'll do your job, and you'll keep your life. Good luck to all of you. If the new men learned enough, Carl Jordan and his classmates had facts thrown at them day after day before they ever got near the water, the physical properties of the elements they'd be dealing with. Pure water is a clear liquid made up of two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. It's compressible, but only slightly. At 39 degrees Fahrenheit, it's the standard for our specific gravity, one cc weighing a gram. Most of you men run to muscle and bone. They're slightly heavier than water. Fat tissue and the residual air in your lungs are lighter. Now, what it adds up to is that most of you, unweighted, could float indefinitely as long as you could keep at least a couple of fingers moving. Air is an invisible, odorless, tasteless mixture of gases formed chiefly of nitrogen and oxygen, nearly in the ratio of four to one. It's compressible and elastic. At sea level, depending on the temperature and barometric pressure, it might take 773 quarts of air to equal the weight of one quart of water. That means, for one thing, it doesn't take much air to get you headed back up for the surface. And the deeper you are, the quicker it'll act. What they'd be working in, what they'd be working with. This is your deep gear. Look it over and handle the items, all of you. These are your lead-weighted boots, 22 pounds apiece. This is your suit, rubber diving dress, 18 and a quarter pounds. Your belt with the lead blocks is your heaviest item, 85 pounds. Uh, uh, could, could we get that bell off in a hurry, Mr. Moran? Uh, that is, if we had to? Fast enough, Bracken. But you won't ever have cause to if you handle your lines and the air nozzle as you should. And it's the way your instructors have told you. A man who starts worrying too much on a dip doesn't have time to look out for himself, let alone get his job done. Well, I'm sorry, sir. I, I didn't mean to give the idea that... Ask uh... any questions that hits you. Top sides where it's easy to answer them, if we've got the answers. Now, this is your knife, two and a half pounds. Your breastplate and helmet, 54 pounds taken together, make up the basic gear. Just over 200 pounds of it. A lot lighter underwater than it feels here, but there'll be times when you'll think you're lugging a piano on your shoulders. Inside the helmet, you'll generally have a two-way telephone rig and, of course, your air intake and exhaust. You regulate your air supply. And... But the most important equipment any novice diver takes underwater is himself. His own brains, coolness, physical handiness, and some qualities of courage and adaptability that can't be known till a man makes his first dive. 
It can be rough down there with a deep rig on, Jordan, even for someone who likes the water. Half the men who try this get washed out for claustrophobia. They tighten up and panic when they get down there? With a helmet and a couple of tons of water piled on, anybody can get a touch of it. It can clear up fast if you remember what we've taught you. And if... Well, if you can't lick it, give four jerks on the line and we'll haul you up. Up and out of the school. No disgrace if a man's makeup just won't let him loosen up down under. In your case, though, maybe I ought to tell you that uh, Mike Moran thinks you've got the makings of a good deep water man. The chief said that about me? He's on operations now, not at the school, and that's an off-the-record guess. He's pulling for all of you in the class anyhow, and he knows no bets hold till the man's actually been down. You all set? Yeah. Luck to you, soldier. Thanks. All set, Bill, when you and Keo are. Let's go. The tenders above can follow a man's progress by the used air that keeps bubbling up. In the darkening, strange world, Carl Jordan has entered, except for his phone, the man hears only the hiss of the compressed fresh air entering the helmet. Should be nearly down, Jordan. Near bottom yet? No. No, not yet, Sergeant. Current bothering you any? No. Well, how about... About claustrophobia? I got it all right. I feel about as jammed in as a lobster in a milk bottle. You want up? No. Oh, it took too many months to get down here, Sergeant. I, I think I'm starting to feel better already. Sure. Sarge, I'm on bottom now. Good gone, soldier. Remember which way for the buoy? I think it's a half turn and straight on. Well, get going. We'll check your bubbles. Moving right along, Bill. Off course there to start with, then correct him, swung back, not a yard out. He's halfway to the buoy. I better get him turned. Jordan, you getting your sea legs down there? All okay so far. You want me to keep on going? No. Pull up. Take a half turn right. Go ahead about four paces. Half turn right. Up, two, three. At four, half turn right again, head back to the barge. Now, take it easy, and around or over any obstructions you hit. Back below the ladder, Sergeant. You want me to start up? You in a hurry to haul out? No, no, I'm beginning to like it down here. If you'll drop me a spear, maybe I can get us a mess of crabs. Okay, okay, get started up. But remember, easy does it. Uh, here, I got him, Bill. All right. Oh. There you are, Jordan. <sighs> Helmet off, and you can start drying away some of that sweat. Did I qualify? I didn't come up too fast or anything. You did, did all right, Jordan. I'm ready to ride with Mike Moran and say maybe you will be a diver before you throw. Now, hold it, Mac. Sure you did all right, Jordan. The first dip, you did fine. Well, thanks, Sergeant. For a minute there, I knew I almost but got But the off... Army doesn't send men underwater just to keep cool or... Uh catch up with the makings of a fish fry. Now we head back to the shops and you'll really start learning what it takes to make an army diver. You mean welding and underwater repair and all that? Welding, jetting, handling the air saw. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Bill. Would it save time if we just say what we're not going to teach you? Mac, you've got a point. Okay, Jordan, you won't have to get up on needlework, cotton chopping, bass fiddle playing, or brain surgery. <laughs> You are listening to the proudly we hailed production, Underwater Soldiers. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. The man who measures up will succeed anywhere. For a life of excitement and adventure, join the United States Army. The Army is the proving ground, the place where the men and the boys part company, where you'll learn more about how to take care of yourself and how to lead others in a few short months than you could in a lifetime of civilian activity. In the Army, your opportunities for advancement and leadership are unlimited. 
but you've got to have what it takes. The man who measures up here will succeed anywhere. Can you measure up? If you think you can, then here's an opportunity for you to serve your country and build a man-sized career for yourself that will take you as far as you want to go. Visit your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station now. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now we present the second act of Underwater Soldiers. Sergeant Bill Gunther was laying it on a little when he told Carl Jordan the Fort Eustis Diving School candidates might have to learn nearly everything but brain surgery and bass fiddle playing, but not by much. Working often in blackness with only his groping hands to tell him what he's dealing with, an army diver has to know the techniques of timber, steel, and concrete construction, the handling of pumps and suction devices, understand the interaction of currents and tides, be as ready to rebuild a dock as to blow up an underwater barrier on an ingoing combat landing. But the Army gives these crack troubleshooters an array of special tools matching the varied calls on their engineers. This is your water jet. It amounts to a weighted high-pressure water hose and you use it to clear out mud from a working area or from under anything where you want to get a cable or chain into rig a lift. Back in June, you saw it used to help free a submerged tank. You rig an airlift when you want to draw up any loose cargo material to lighten a sunken vessel, say gravel or grain or sand. You set your weighted intake down into the material you want to clear. For cutting piling or any kind of timber underwater, you have this air saw. It's motor driven and operates by compressed air. With hacksaw teeth, it'll cut through cable. On cable, where you need even faster action, we've got this power velocity cutter. It amounts to firing an expendable blade right through your cable. Tools for salvage and repair. Tools for destruction. In Korea, between the first and second occupations of the port of Incheon by United Nations forces, United States Army divers serving with the 50th Engineers Port Construction Company had the job of making the docks unusable by the enemy. And then the more satisfying job of helping restore the port to top operating efficiency when the forces of freedom came back to stay, as they had done on scores of jobs from Luzon to Antwerp during and after World War II. At Fort Eustis, as the training schedule reached its final weeks, Carl Jordan and his classmates were moving deeper and deeper under the waters of the James River and the bay, handling themselves and their varied tools with a rising confidence that comes with practical experience. All okay down there, Jordan? All okay, Sergeant. You're at 80 feet. Rig your guideline on the anchor chain and start a sweep search. When you find the pipe section we dropped, burn off a one-foot length and bring it up. You got it? Sweep search till I hit the pipe. Burn off one foot length and bring it up. Starting swing to left now, Sergeant. Carl Jordan did have the makings. 22 weeks after he started training at Fort Eustis, he was graduated from the school and awarded a second class diver's badge qualified to work at depths down to 150 feet. The following day, he heard even better news. Hey, Carl. Huh? Carl, wait up a second. Oh, what's up, Bill? You're in luck, soldier. The chief's asked for you in operations here. Mike thinks I'm good enough to work uh, Don't get too cocky. Tut's been flagged down to the canal zone for a couple of months, and Mike thinks he can make out with you on temporary assignment. <laughs> Getting the feel of that river drill, Jordan? I think so, Chief. At least I'm making a little better time than I was this morning. I've just been posting the new assignment schedule. You'll be on eight-hour standby call tomorrow and Friday. Uh, Mr. Moran. Yeah? I've been on dry salvage and repair here for nearly a month. Don't I ever get to go down on a real job with you or Mac? Yeah, look. Mac and I both think you're coming along fine. 
The day a diver first class asks you to go down more than 150 feet with him on an actual job, just remember he's making a pretty big bet on you. His life along with mine. Look, I'd work you below 200 or more if I had to. But we got a pretty good safety record in this section, Carl. If it takes you four months more to make first, you'll still be beating par. By one of the unpredictable emergencies that keep Operations Chief Mike Moran's divers on around-the-clock call, Carl Jordan, not six weeks later, got more than the action he'd been asking for. Taken along as alternate second diver on what should have been a run-of-the-mill, shallow salvage operation in Florida, Carl learned on arrival of their plane at the Army base that this mission wasn't to be routine. Mac, signal's off on the unloading. There was a call from Mike waiting here, and we've got to get the gear back on the plane. Mike wants us back at Eustis, and we just got here? There's an emergency call from over below Jacksonville. A civilian diver trapped down at 240. Jordan! Keo, gear back on the plane. Let's go, guys. Mac, pilot's checking now on an emergency strip down below Jacksonville that should let us set the plane down within a mile of an inlet. And there we can pick up a boat. But come on, I'll tell you on the way. The Army team they said was coming out? Right. I'm Sergeant Gunther. This is Sergeant McMase and Corporal Jordan. Your parish, the one who radioed in? Yes, right. I thought maybe I'd get through the Navy at Charleston, but they told me from Jacksonville you guys are already in the area. Oh, thank the Lord for that. What kind of trouble is your partner in down under? Scalzi? Yeah, I'm scared he's. Well, he's almost had it. I'm not sure what you can do. See, there's a big charter boat down there. We were trying to seal off the engine room and get some air into it for a drum lift. But the hull shifted with Scalzi working inside, slipped off down 50 feet deeper, and clamped him in tight. Well, doesn't he have any tools? No, no, Can't his, he... his leg's broken and jammed under a casing that shifted when the hull rolled. The way his lines are now, you'll have to burn or cut in to get him loose. You weren't able to go down yourself? I've got a trick heart. Doc just caught up with it a month ago, said if I ever try to work below 50 feet again, I could go out like a light. This was just supposed to be a survey scouts he was running today. I told him an hour ago I'd go down anyhow, but he said that'd be losing two for sure instead of one for maybe, and he'd rather take his chances waiting for a rescue team. Okay, however he got there, it'll take two men to get him up. Mac, maybe you better take the oxy arc torch and hey, I'll Bill. take... Bill, you can't go down this first trip. I can't go. What do you mean, Carl? You're the master diver, the only one who can direct two men below or bail them out if anyone gets fouled up. It's a two-man job, Carl. Mac can't swing it alone. Let me go down with him. At 240 feet, kid? Well, the deepest you've worked is... I've been below 200, and I could have worked there. Now, wait I... a minute, Mac. Jordan's got a point. If there's trouble with both of us down, that leaves him trying to get three men up from 240. I can have a try alone, Bill. You won't have no, to... No, no, no. I want you topside, Mac. You're going down alone, Bill? You just said yourself... I'm going down with Jordan. Get him locked up, Keo. And Parrish, if you've got a phone hook up down to Scalzi... Bill. Getting cold feet, Carl? No, I... I just want to say thanks. You're the one who's taking the chances. Get locking, soldier. We got a job on. This your phone, Parrish? That's it, Sergeant. Scalzi... Scalzi. Yeah. Who's that? Sergeant Gunther, Army Diving Section. You still okay down there except for the legs? I'd call it medium, Sarge. But if ever I was glad to hear... Well, two of us are coming down for you. Can you give us a setup? I don't know how you get at me. The way the boat's keeled over, you'll have to cut through three-inch holes. <laughs> You're down over 2.30, Bill. All okay? Okay, Mac. We've been guiding on Scalzi's line. Wait a minute. I'm on bottom. Thick growth, but hard under. Cut over to Jordan and see if he's down. Jordan? Jordan, you on bottom yet? Just touch, Mac. Okay. Okay. Smack up against the hole. I can't see Bill. A uh, hole there, and he'll work in by you. You're still left of Scalzi's line? Check. Bill, Jordan's in at the hole, still guiding on Scalzi's line from left. All right. 
Tell him I'm going in on the right, and I'll make hand contact. Jordan, as you are till Bill makes hand contact. And keep watching your lines. Jordan. Jordan. We cut through to Scalzi, Mac. He's still okay. Bill told me. Now I wants to know if you can lever up that casing or whatever it is that's holding Scalzi's leg. I got a jack under it now. A jack? You didn't take down a jack. No, I found one here. Plain old car hand jack. And it works. At 240, you've been scrounging around for a jack? Okay, kid, okay. Get lifting. Bill will pull him out if you can work the casing up. There's the inland ahead, Bill. Ten minutes we're in. How's the leg, Scalzi? No splints bothering you any? Oh, don't worry about the leg, Sergeant. Just being topside and alive is more than I ever thought I'd have. Well, you can thank Diver for his class Jordan here for that, Scalzi. If we'd had to take time to try burning that case... Diver, away, first we'd... class? Bill, you can't qualify me just for getting lucky on this one job. In the book, it says I got... Mike Moran can qualify you whenever you're ready. And when he hears how you promoted that carjack down inside there at 240... Well, I've got five to one. It says you're in. Ten to one, Bill. And I'll throw in that Mike sets up both of you to the two biggest shore dinners you ever tucked away. And now, wait a minute, wait a minute, you army guys. After what you did hey, today... Hey, hey, Scalzi, take it easy now, will you? You twist that leg around you... Look, you're... these soldiers ask me, I'll twist it off and give it to them for salvage. If anybody's buying shore dinners for the army, Sergeant, I'm putting in to pick up the check. <laughs> We all share freedom, help share its defense. Join the Army team. Yes, now, as always, the United States Army is dedicated to the defense of freedom, your freedom. You can do something about it. The time for decision, for action, is now. The need for trained technicians in every field is urgent, and you can be trained in the most advanced techniques using the world's finest equipment. Visit your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for full details. Remember, we all share freedom, help share its defense. Join the Army team. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center for the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail. <laughs>